I do. It's real like good. Well, I mean, they're all good. <laughs> you want me to look at the important stuff or what? Can I tell me something? You can look at the cards. What's wrong? They're on a trip. They're on a trip. Oh. Wish I was on a trip. I'm planning a trip. I haven't decided where I'm going. I don't think I'm going to make it till Christmas before I go anywhere. You take me with you. I need a trip. And then I'm going to want to go somewhere warm. Thank you, sir. And you know, I have a week off from the 20th to the 26th. There we go. So I'm in December. Isn't it about time I decide where I'm going? Yeah. Oh, Didn't mean to let it get so late. I'm sorry. Well, 
call this meeting to order the regular meeting for the Board of Aldermen for the City of Edina for the month of September. If you'll bear with me, we'll start with a little indication here. Oh, gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for our beautiful little town on the hill here and all the fine people that make up that town. We ask you to please lighten the burdens of the good citizens and if you would, Lord, and also we ask if we can ask you to look in over the city employees as they go about their day-to-day -day operations and please help keep the city employees safe. Also, if you would look in on the elected and appointed officials and please give them the courage and the vision and the wisdom to do things as you would have them done. Lord, we ask this in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Renee, would you like to lead us in the pledge? Yes. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Margaret, do we have minutes of prior meetings that we need to address? Yes, August 10th, 2015, the Board of Aldermen met in regular session with Mayor Strickler presiding. Alderman President, Renee Edwards, Ron Stansbury, Rick Winter, Bill Alberti, Doc Kirkshizer, Delmer Strange, absent none. Mayor Strickler called the meeting to order and gave the invocation. The Pledge of Allegiance was led by Renee Edwards. Minutes of the July 13th meeting were read and approved with one correction. Alderman Strange noted that some of the fire hydrants have not been painted, so the minutes should reflect this. Collector's report was given and approved. The collector also reported that two water customers were disconnected for non-payment, but they have been reconnected. Melissa Yoakum, 202 West Marion Street, reported to the board that the caution signs for children playing and the stop signs at West Marion Street and North Baker Street have done very little to slow the traffic down on Marion Street. Melissa said the signs have probably caused some to avoid the area by taking other streets. There was some discussion regarding different ways to slow this traffic. Motion was made by Renee Edwards and seconded by Doc Prickseiser to install speed bumps on West Marion Street near the North Cotty Street intersection. Motion carried unanimously. There was a consensus to leave stop signs on West Marion Street at the North Baker Street intersection. Peggy Collins, City Treasurer, met with the board. She said the E911 budget should be amended to reflect the invoice, which is $16,667. Motion was made by Bill Alberti and seconded by Ron Stansberry to amend the budget as recommended by the City Treasurer. Motion carried unanimously. The Treasurer's report for July was reviewed and approved. Collins noted that she has reviewed, reviewed and approved the City's 2014 audit. She said the only finding was a lack of segregation of duties, which is normally difficult to accomplish within a small organization. Peggy noted that there are procedures in place to address this, and she reviews all reports on a monthly basis. Motion was made by Bill Alberti and seconded by Ron Stansberry to pay all bills as presented, with the exception of the Klingner and Associates bill, which will be considered with the sewer project invoices. Motion carried unanimously. Mayor Strickler asked that the records reflect the recent passing of Dayton Grover, a city employee for many years at the water plant and also as a dispatcher. Mayor Strickler said Dayton was an exemplary employee and that Edina will be a sadder place without him. At 7.30 p.m., Mayor Strickler announced the opening of the public hearing for comments prior to setting the property tax rates for 2015. He said the total assessed valuation for 2015 is 10 million 519,012, and the tax rate allowed by the State Auditor's Office is 0.8974. There were no comments. Motion was made by Renee Edwards and seconded by Doc Prickseiser to set the tax rate at 0.8974. Roll call vote was taken and the motion carried. Eyes were Renee Edwards, Ron Stansberry, Rick Winter, Bill Alberti, Doc Prickseiser, and Delmer Strange. Nays, none. Regina Leckby, president of the Knox County Promotional Council, met with the board. She requested street closings for the annual Knox County Corn Festival, which will be September 11th, 12th, and 13th. There was a consensus to allow the street closings for the Corn Fest. Leckby also requested some financial support 
from the city to help the promotional council to sponsor and promote the corn festival motion was made by rick winter and second by denver strange to pay one thousand dollars to the knox county promotional council for the services activities and public benefits provided by the promotional council in connection with the 2015 knox county corn festival motion carried unanimously thomas christian director for, of the knox county community center met with the board he said their contract with the city renews annually in June, but he has been unable to make the June and July meetings. He requested that the contract with the city be modified to increase the city's payment to $2,000, which reflects the amount they have paid for city services for the prior 12 months. A motion was made by Bill Alberti and seconded by Rick Winter to modify the contract with the community center to allow for a payment of $2,000. Motion carried. Eyes were Ron Stansberry, Rick Winter, Bill Alberti, Dot Crickseiser, Delmer Strange. Uh, nays were Renee Edwards. Under citizen comments, Echo Menjes said she was informed on Friday that the Knox County Community Development <coughs> Corporation, the KCCDC, owns the building at the Edina City Lake, which was once the Edina Golf Club's clubhouse. She asked the board if they agreed that the buildings built by the golf club now belong to the KCCDC. And if so, what type of documentation is there to show that they own the buildings? She also asked the board if they have any say in what happens to the buildings and who occupies them. Echo asked if the KCCDC has a contract or lease for the use of the building's parking area and grounds. She also requested whether the board has seen the contract between the city and the Edina Golf Club and whether there is a contract between the city and the KCCDC. The board had little or no response to Echo's questions, but Alderman Stansberry said they would get some answers and get back to Echo. Mark Bross of Klingner & Associates met with the board. He reported that work on the city's sewer improvement project has begun. He said there was some question about the service laterals, and these will be put in. Any that were not done will be put in before the project is completed. Mark presented three pay requests to the board for their approval. The following action was taken. The motion was made by Renee Edwards and seconded by Ron Stansberry to approve the Willis Brothers pay request number one in the amount of 313,561.40. Motion <coughs> carried unanimously. The motion was made by Rick Winter and seconded by Renee Edwards to approve the <coughs> Utility Solutions pay request number one in the amount of $40,905. Motion carried unanimously. Motion was made by Ron Stansberry and seconded by Delma <coughs> Strange to approve the Klingner and Associates pay request in the amount of 20385 Motion carried unanimously. Mark stated that the estimate of funds to be requested from USDA Rural Development is $378,241.70. <coughs> Motion was made by Bill Alberti and seconded by Rick Winter to approve the estimate of funds recommended by Mark Bross. Motion carried unanimously. Ross recommended that an additional inspector, Joshua Hartsock, be approved for the sewer project. His resume and job description were reviewed by the board. Motion was made by Bill Alberti and seconded by Doc Crickseiser to approve Joshua Hartsock as an inspector for the sewer project. <coughs> Motion carried unanimously. There was some discussion regarding the use of concrete or asphalt to replace the trenches that have been dug in the streets for the sewer lines. And the mayor can read the list of it. <laughs> there was some discussion regarding the use of concrete or asphalt to replace the trenches that have been dug in the streets for the sewer lines. There was a consensus to use concrete as the contract dictates, with some gravel streets being the exception. Gross informed the board that a pipe bursting operation will be done to avoid a detour of the Highway 15 traffic. He said signage will be required for the manhole work on Route 6. Lane drops, flagmen, and channelizers for the pipe bursting on Route 15 and allow traffic to use other side streets when a portion of Route P is closed. Motion was made by Bill Alberti and seconded by Rick Winter to approve all the MoDOT permits and authorize the mayor to sign a letter to MoDOT allowing traffic from Route P to utilize adjacent streets to access Route 15 or Route 6 as needed and not hold MoDOT responsible if any damage should occur to city streets. Motion carried unanimously. 
According to Mark Bross, the design work has been completed for the Purcell Street sewer project, and this project can be bid whenever the city wants to proceed. Motion was made by Delmer Strange and seconded by Rick Winter to go to bid for the Purcell Street sewer project. Motion carried unanimously. Kelly Hayes, chief of police, reported that he sent <coughs> several more letters and a ticket to some residents that need to mow their properties. He also said he will be watching the traffic more on Marion Street. <coughs> Ty Parrish, utility supervisor, met with the board. He reported that his department has been busy with the sewer project, which involves lots of locates. He also said that Steve Peters, the newest employee, has started working for the city. Ty said Amherst, Missouri has donated a 2006 Ford truck to the city. This is a 37-foot aerial truck which will be used for trimming trees, maintenance of the street lights in the business district, hanging Christmas decorations, and numerous other jobs that now can be performed in a safer manner. Jeff Doss met with the board. His concern was the amount of water during a big rain that cannot be handled by the existing culverts and flows onto his property from the community center, their parking lot, and other areas uptown. There was some discussion, but the problem was not resolved. Later in the meeting, Ty, uh, Mike Wright, and Alderman Stansbury agreed to meet with Jeff to discuss this further. Mike Wright, wastewater superintendent, met with the board. He reported that July was a very wet month and the average flow was 368,000 gallons per day, which calculates out to 167% of the design flow and 11,414,000 gallons treated. Mike also said it had been a difficult month to maintain the ball fields. He said the big field had been too muddy to mow and will be sprayed. The little field has had big rocks in it left from the flooding. Alderman comments. Alderman Strange noted some maintenance jobs that he feels the city crew should be doing. He also suggested that a time clock be installed at the city maintenance building to ensure that workers are putting in their time. Motion was made by Renee Edwards and seconded by Rick Winter to adjourn. Motion carried and the meeting was adjourned. Are there any additions or corrections? I wonder that meeting took eight hours or how long. It was, was a long was. meeting. <laughs> if there are no additions or corrections, those minutes are considered approved by consensus. Okay, next, the Pledge of Allegiance. No, we did that. Collector's report. Hello. Collections for August. The water total, $20,960.36. Sewer total, $26,379.20. Sanitation total, $13,937.94. General fund total, $8,569.48. Recreation total, $319. Street total, $2,180.94. Special lights total $13.72. Meter deposit total $460. Reserve and improvement fund total zero. With a grand total collected $72,820.64. Very good. Any questions for the <coughs> collector? <coughs> because I don't remember that was like a week or so ago. Sorry. It looks like we had a lady who got a shut off notice and was very upset about it. Yes. But I don't, I only send those out, like we will call if it's their first or second time on there. And our list shows every month when I print it out. And that was, she's been on there four times in the last 12 months. So she got one. 
It just so happened that she dropped her payment off after it was already hung before she got there to see it. So, yeah. It was already done. She had not made the payment prior to it being hung. That. So it was just a question of timing. But like this last month when you have between 40 and 50 to hang. And, I mean, sometimes it takes the guys a little bit to do that because it's all over that they have mm -hmm. to do that. And we did have a lot more this time, but. Did everybody get managed to pay? Yes, we had um, one, two, two that we shut off. Or one that actually got shut off, the other one came in, and then that one called and came in and took care of it. But we had even, even when we send the shutoffs out, I still, the day that the guys go to shut off, I stay through my lunch hour and I call every one of them that's still on it and try to give them another chance. So they have plenty of chances. It's Thank just, you for doing that. We try really hard because it's a lot of work if we have to shut them off. It's a lot of work for them. They have to hang the shutoffs, then they have to go back and shut them off, then they have to go turn them on. It's a lot of work for us and the computer. So we try really hard to keep from shutting them off if they cooperate. But we didn't have to shut this. We did not, no. She, her payment, basically, and that's what we try to tell people too, is when we hang those, that's just a reminder. You still have 24 hours to call or get your payment in before the guys get sent out. <laughs> Well, she's upset because she had this notice hanging on her door. Yes. Okay. Well, and she questioned why why we um, have a penalty on there. Yeah, she wanted to know why we have a penalty, up. but if you look, I even went home and looked at, we looked at our other bills, like from the gas company and the electric <coughs> company, they also have that on there. They late. also hang pay, shutoffs. Yeah, if you pay on time, this is what it is. If you pay late, this is what it is. Mm -hmm. And technically, what? who was it that, was it? Mr. Debney that told us that hanging the shutoffs was actually just a courtesy. We aren't required to do it. Right. So, our, I our mean. Our attorneys have always told us that, uh, that we don't really have to even send out notices or anything. Uh -huh. okay, well, sorry the poor lady was <laughs> Sorry, but we didn't, didn't mean, like yeah, we didn't mean to hurt anybody's feelings. I mean, we just, we well, send them to everybody that. I understand. Any further questions for the city collector? Thank you very Thank much. You're welcome. City treasurer could not be with us this evening, but the report is here. And is this the proper time to go into the what she's requesting? Probably because they have that sounds the like this is there. a good time to go for it. Well the park, we spent money to work on the shelters and all, but I guess we didn't think uh, or I didn't think about not having enough money in the recreation fund to pay for it. So we need to uh, amend the budget. If we, uh, we've got this rehab fund that you see about halfway down, which dates back to the 80s. Yeah. And, and we've been wanting to just close out that fund. So if we're going to take this rehab fund money and put that to, towards this shelter, the, the shelter came to six thousand three hundred twenty-five dollars and sixty-four cents. So we're going to, with the board's approval, take this fifteen hundred fifty-five dollars sixty, fifteen hundred fifty-six dollars, rough it out, and apply that to the, uh, and we'll close that fund. Then we're going to amend the capital improvement fund to pay the balance of $4,769.64. And then while we're at it, we need to amend the sanitation budget uh, for a capital outlay of $2,519 to pay for the dumpsters that we, the additional dumpsters that we need. <coughs> Clear as mud. Well, thank you, Mr. Linder. That's nice of you. Mr. Stansberry. 
there any further discussion? If there's no further discussion, all those in amending the budget, please raise your hand. All those opposed to amending the budget, raise your hand. All those abstaining, raise your hand. Madam Clerk, I count five ayes, no nays, and we have one absent. Any other notes from the treasurer? Good. Well, in that would bring us to item number seven, the monthly bills. Has anybody had a chance to peruse and examine the monthly bills? The only thing I saw in there was a four inch clamp that cost $507. Oh, that's a lot of time here. Not, that was our accessory for our locator. Oh, uh, well, the induction clamp? Yeah, it's, it's just described as it just says a four inch clamp. Yeah, I thought maybe it was like a water <laughs> clamp. It's, it's an induction clamp that hooks up like four meters in the basements where we can't get a ground off of our locator. You just go in and hook plugs into our receiver and you hook it around the copper wire or hook it around a water line. I it's been you. kind of a lifesaver. And I'm not I've sure. Margaret and I were talking about this the other day. I think we still had a little bit of. I think we budgeted for like three grand per locator, and we didn't use all right. that, so it should help cover yeah, that. Yeah, we had spent the amount we had budgeted for our locator, so we used the rest of that, and then the rest that we came out of regular water repair. I was just curious because yep. it's a four inch clamp and I'm yep. thinking five hundred and some dollars for a four inch clamp. Get one at Home Depot for $6. Make that thing out of gold or what? <laughs> <laughs> it's been pretty handy. We've used it quite a bit here lately. Yeah, there are there are handy. <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, was there a project on uh, Alan Mobrick's street or something? I see some rock. Oh, well, you might see that? on any of the rock tickets, you may see Alan Wardwin or Ron Stansberry or anybody. If a citizen requests that we haul rock, uh, well, they'll tell who the guys, they'll tell them who it we're hauling it for. Uh -huh. And then we bill the customer. I mean, okay. it's on our bill, and then Melissa bills it. And we bill then also for hauling, it's $2.10. So we'll so bill. Yeah. You know, if somebody wants to hear drive, mm -hmm. yeah. So you don't have to take your van out there and shovel the back end full of gravel. Are you saying my truck wasn't good? Oh, I forgot. You got the heavy Chevy. So the chair would entertain a motion to uh, pay the bills and preserve the city's good credit rating. I'll make a motion. Thank you, Mr. Stansberry. I'll second. Well, thank you, Ms. Crickseiser. Any further discussion? There being no further discussion, all those in favor, raise your hand. All those opposed, same sign. All those abstaining, same sign. Madam Clerk, I count five ayes, no nays, no abstentions. One is still absent. Citizens' concerns. Is this a good time to talk with Jeff, or are we yeah. going to talk about I figured that was under unfinished business. Um, I thought maybe that was under unfinished business or something. I don't, I don't know how you guys would. Well, we could do it then or we could do it. Depends on how quick you want out of here. <laughs> well, uh, I'm just coming back to, nobody met with me or anything since last meeting, so I was just coming back to see what, the, what was going on. Okay. Do you guys, did you have a chance to find answers to those questions I started asking last month? I got an answer from the mayor and I haven't talked to John yet, but I, yes. I do have an answer. Is that under all of Okay. Yeah, for Mark. Get rid of him. <laughs> <laughs> no, we know Mark has a long way to go. That's okay, right. let's. <laughs> Let's, let's at this time go to item nine and talk with Mr. Mark Ross. Come on up. All right. Plugging away on laying pipe in the ground. Probably about 50% done with laying of the pipe. The lining people aren't here yet. Manhole people are 
probably about 40 percent done. Uh, the plant people, uh, the people that be working on the plant, we've gotten through our shop drawing submittals on our equipment and all that stuff, and, and uh, that equipment is on order. I expect some of it to come in probably some in October, some in later November. So they'll be probably mobilizing in November to do some of that work. Fortunately, it's not something that weather is going to impact a huge amount, so it's a long lead of time on those aerators and some of the controls and things like that. So uh, that's kind of where we're at. Uh, the other thing is, is I noticed uh, driving around town just a little bit before the meeting, uh, there's some trenches that need a little more rock in them. What they've been doing is trenching and then letting it settle for a couple of weeks and put a little more rock back in. Particularly north end of town, more recent stuff a little more attention. And so I'd let my inspector know that. Uh, they're probably going to start working on some concrete work, uh, maybe before the end of the month, to try to go ahead and dress those trenches back up or store them. So um, look for that before we meet again. Uh, I did get, uh, we had a couple of pay requests. A couple of bills and then uh, an estimate of funds we need to address this evening. So we can keep, keep on moving with this. Uh, we received pay application number two from Willis Brothers for $348,957 that we need to uh, consider for approval. Uh, we reviewed that and recommend approval. So, so we need a motion to that effect? Yeah. We just paid them last month already. Yeah, so. we'll be doing it a monthly until they're about done. So it's it's progress estimates as they go. So based on the work completed. Yep. Yep. Okay. They've uh, their contracts around two million dollars, and with this, they will have completed about seven hundred thousand dollars worth of the two million. And then, of course, we're three weeks, two to three weeks into the next month already. So we're about fifty percent. Thank you, Mr. Stansbury. Okay, thank you, Ms. Edwards. You got that figure? $348,957. Okay. Yep. All those in favor, raise your hand. All those opposed, same sign. All those abstaining, same sign. And let's clerk, I can't file the eyes, no nays, no abstentions. Okay. Uh, we also received uh, pay application number two from Utility Solutions, who's doing manual work, in the amount of $54,218.07. We recommend approval. Okay. Make a motion to that. Thank you, Ms. Edwards. I'll second. Thank you, Mr. Stansberry. All in favor? Pay and utility solutions, raise your hand. All those opposed, same sign. All those abstaining, same sign. Discussion, will it? Oh, I forgot. Did you want to? Discuss? No, I said there's no need to discuss it, will it? No, not really. Five eyes, no nays, no abstentions. Who else should we pay? Uh, we, have, we have two other invoices. One is from Gilmore and Bell. They were there at the bond council, uh, did the bond transcripts and all of that work, and that's been course all completed uh, and that bill is for $20,450 so council needs to consider approval okay I move thank you Mr. Alberti is that a second yeah that was a second okay thank you Ms. Kirksizer uh, any discussion there being no further discussion all those in favor of the motion raise your hand all those opposed, same sign. All those abstaining, same sign. And put five eyes, no nays, no abstentions. But Gilmore and Bell be paid. Okay, and then the last one is uh, the Klingner invoice, uh, which includes some construction administration work, reviewing the uh, pay requests, the shop drawing, some metals, uh, working with contractors on those, and then, of course, our inspector uh, being on site out there. And, and that total is 40100 
trouble the water tower is not communicating with the booster station at this time because of a phone it communicates over a phone line and a pressure sending unit I'd ask Mark to look into since we're making the lift stations all um, we're upgrading them and how they communicate to us as far as in an emergency um, they'll call us on our phones and tell us what's going on and we can look it up on the internet to find out if there's a problem at those situations I'd asked him to go ahead and look into um, upgrading the water tower um, just to kind of get us some hard numbers so we would know what to look at um, that's not really my place so I just wanted to make sure you guys knew that I was the one that sicked him on that and if it's too much it's too much if it if it works out that we can no, I do that at the same idea. time a good it, idea to it, check into it we, we've had it. trouble we've had trouble with that two or three times in the last couple of years and it's on a designated circuit that 
has a little bit of trouble and it's all through the phone, this will all be um, done radio style so that we won't have that problem. So I'd asked him to look into it and get us some hard figures that we can work with and hopefully when we do all the others maybe they can do something with the water tower at the same time that they're in town doing the wastewater stuff too. <coughs> I've done some of these in the past and uh, you know it's going to be probably around five thousand dollars but that's the one that I'm looking at is about a half to a third of what most of the other types are out there so and you're and we're already doing that system with your lift stations and your wastewater tank so this is just another piece we can add it on to our you know, they go to the same location to review data and things like that. It's all there. And of course it calls them if there's alarms and things like that. So But okay. I'll get you a good proposal for that. I'll get it to Mike and then you can just look into it what you want to do. So Yeah, that's I just thought I'd the water tower run over today because it wouldn't communicate with the booster station, so um, until they get the phone line fixed, Ty's running the booster stations manually. He has to turn them on and... I'd rather be a little, a little too full than a little too empty. <laughs> right. Still, yeah, kind but of it could go the other way very easily. If it doesn't communicate while they're off, it won't tell it to come on. So it just happened to be that they were on when we lost communications. If they were off and we lost communications, they won't come on. So it could have went It could have went the other way just as easy as... The new setup won't rely on a phone line. It's actually cellular communication, and it, and this this company can work with any cellular whatever has the best signal. They're not limited to just what's around here. They can use Verizon or AT and T or Sprint or whoever. I just <coughs> it sounds like a good idea. Yes, I'm glad you brought that to our attention. I think that's an excellent idea. Yeah, it's not it's not impacted by weather. Good. I've done probably involved with probably 15 to 20 of these. I never get calls about whether that didn't work or I'm having problems with it. So well, it's good. Darn, darn near bulletproof. Good. Well, so that's what we want. So. All right. Margaret, I'll just have you mail the paperwork to me if you would. Okay. After you get signed. So. Yep. Any questions for me? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yeah, let's back up to citizens' comments. I see we had a citizen show up. Would you? <laughs> yeah, or you can come sit down up here, whatever you... Um, we just want, like, speed bumps or stop signs on Lafayette. And Bolton, there are a lot of little kids. I don't know. You guys know what I'm talking about. At Lafayette and, and, and where, Bolton. And Bolton. And down by your house. Yeah, we're, like by where we live. A lot of people will run the stop sign. A lot of people go pretty fast. And there are a lot of little kids playing where um, Junior Crabtree has that empty place on the corner. They play there a lot and my girls and the girls at Grandma and Betty's we don't let them but once in a while they run across the street to go to Grandma's you know and I would just appreciate if people went slower. Is this had the reason same people that we've got off the other street and now they're using that? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like it. Doesn't <laughs> have a lot of are there currently is, is, are there stop signs in some of those just want to stop there? Street. Did this, just, did this just start or has it been an ongoing thing for a while? There are a few names. I'm not going to say them, but there are a few that run the stop signs. There's one that just flies by our house and turns that corner. And like I said, in a block up, is that, I don't know what road that is. Like that Miller house. Maybe Baker. Maybe Baker. Baker. There are little kids there that are in the road a lot. I don't know if anybody's watching them, but there's just there's a lot of little kids in that area, and I don't know. Off the a 
There's not a stop sign on Lafayette. Yeah. There's not at all. It's <laughs> always, always, it's it's always stop all day. go clear west out of town. It's no, it's, it's, all day. it's all day. It doesn't matter. It's all day. Nothing, nothing where we can set up. All I don't think it matter if there was. Slow it down a little bit or something. It's I mean, prevalent. All day. All day. you've got farm equipment going through there, big four wheel drives with duels on all of them, with cultivators behind. You've got, and I mean, they're in road gear all the way from the four way, all the way down the hill. And I mean, they couldn't get stopped within half a block for love and their money. But, and trucks, some, some trucks are the same way. There's some people that are in cars, but I mean, there's a lot of fast traffic that goes by there. Are you agreeing with me? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of farm stuff, yeah. Yeah. I mean, how's it going with the ones that you guys put out? With what? The ones that are over by Melissa's. Oh, it's a lot. Our Lafayette and Fulton are a lot more busy than Marion, I have to say. I'm wondering if uh, then, like you say, <laughs> they stopped going down Marion. They just the go down yeah. Yeah. Fulton yeah, and Lafayette now. now. Those, Speed yeah, bus, those people so were either going up Marion to the highway or Lafayette and Fulton. So maybe it's busier now. I don't know, but. That's what I wanted. Thank you. Could well, could we maybe have Kelly visit with her and see if they can come up with a proposal? That sounds like a good program. Because we only have the one set of speed bumps, right? We don't have another set. Of we need a plan. We, we've got one speed bump. <laughs> we the speed bump slows her down better than stop sign. We, yeah. 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 we got one. That, that speed bump will have to come up but, before winter. But yeah. Or they'll plow it off. So it'll be temporary for... Mm -hmm. If we had Chief Hayes meet with you, do you think you all could talk and maybe come up with some ideas? I've got a surveillance camera we could live stream. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm not kidding. We could live stream speeders going through there. Like I said, there I are about cool. three that do just don't care. <laughs> I think that would shame them into pulling their license plate numbers and what do you mean? Shame them. That's a good plan. Yeah. 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 Doing burnouts on the speed bus. Look at this. You can't believe that. I think they're almost born. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're on that street. Did you sit there at all? He said he checked there once. Well, uh, it's, I like uh, Mr. Alberti's idea, but we'll have the chief of police get with you and see if, if we can't come up with some kind of a traffic plan for over there. And well, you can talk to Ryan. I mean, Ryan could. wants him too, but for some reason I had to come. <laughs> well, that's what I wanted. <laughs> well, we'll get with Ryan too then. That sounds like a good idea. And see what we can do. Okay. And you know, there's certain individuals involved. I don't know why they couldn't be talked to. That's one of I'll start words. ticketing or them. Or give them my uh, autograph. <laughs> yep. I said, give some right. tickets. It's not going to hurt anybody. Yeah. Right. Get a ticket. Yes. I can okay. buy your house. Well, we're we're not trying to put you off, but I mean, unless we have a some kind of plan. Right. So we'll try to have someone visit with you and Brian and see if we can come up with some plans and then we'll do what we need to because we certainly don't want any accident. That's right. Is there a time of the day that's more, that's worse, like mornings or evenings or just like all the time? It's pretty much all the time. In the late afternoon, there are a couple that <coughs> fly by. And a lot of times it's the same ones, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay, well, thank you very much, and we'll... We'll do something. See what we can do, I guess. How long do you remember how much that speed bump was? It's 
fix them. My mind, yeah. it wasn't any. It was not that kind of two dollars no, ninety eight cent. No, it was deal. pretty expensive. I mean, it was fairly expensive. Because actually, two of them, you know. Well, once we started this, one was popping up all over town. Yeah. Because I could ask the same thing at my street. There's about twelve kids in my neighborhood, and like I said, I'm just gonna stay out on the street one of these days. It's not gonna be good. Well, there's two houses over in our neighborhood that that don't watch their kids. I mean, yeah. they're in the road a lot, and Well, I don't either, because we can't safeguard everybody from everything. Right. right? But I think that if we fix them, they'll just start going down Jackson. Think of all those streets that are that way. And, speed limit in town. I mean, that's and then what is the what is one that goes what by Kinsley? Like 25. 25. 25. Unless like, posted otherwise. Like 25. Well, Fred Kinsley's house. Oh, I don't know. But you know, all those streets. Fast and fast 25 yeah. looks like 65. <coughs> that's you know, true. <laughs> Down through there, 25 would be plenty fast enough. That's, that is be, true. It'd be better to have a slower if you did. But would they listen to the sign? No, I don't think they do. Well, that's for your. That's whenever your that's enforcement. That's where your stop signs come in. Then you have your stop right signs and your enforcement you come in on it. Yeah. We put stop signs all over town for people. I guess my. It just is out in bearing too, so they they don't expect it to slow anybody down, but they wanted if there was an accident for the legality, legality yeah. of it, the person to if there's a stop sign there, then they can cite someone for running the stop sign. Whereas where there's no stop sign, then they're thinking on the tail end at least if there's an accident, then the person who ran the stop sign would be at fault and could be cited. <clears throat> Okay, well, that's something I hadn't thought about. But that's no, 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 or you would be there with them. Can they put it in somebody's know. house or something? Yeah, we could. I've got a motion activated surveillance camera that's got night vision and high definition video display that we could put up there and you guys could see what was going on with your cell phones. Or, you know, I mean, someone goes by. Technology it, continues to amaze. Well, yeah. we just need the citizens to help and call it. I probably wouldn't be seeing it on my cell phone. Call it in. Call it in. Might need to be wrong. My cell phone has a rotary dial on it. Yes, <laughs> I'm sure it does. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, let's go back to. Uh, we've got applications for building permits that we need to consider. First one from Tony Marble on West Reed Street, and that's where they're moving the farm and home store to a metal 100 by 120 building made of sticks and metal. Contractors uh, Tony Hamlin and Mark Clucky estimated date of completion February of 2016. I've seen where they built up the ground. Hopefully, it looks like it's. It looks to me like it's high enough. I, I'm sure they double checked to figure out how high they need to be. Where's maybe where that water's coming from? Yeah, it's going to come down. Mm -hmm. That's some big thing. Yeah, or a moat around the back side or something where it can. Yeah. A golf ball, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say what Mark is doing. <laughs> so is what they, this says 4 is what they've got to put it off there? Oh, I don't know if they've put it off all 4 acres. Well, that's what I want. I'd like to know what they want. I I believe so. 
says there, there are hundred seats and all other drops in there. I move we approve. Well, thank you, Mr. Albert. Thank you, Ms. Edwards. Is there any further discussion? If there's no further discussion, all those in favor, raise your hands. All those opposed, say sign. All those abstaining, say sign. Madam Clerk, five eyes, no nays. Let's the building take place. A Mr. Scott Crimes at 508 North First Street has he had an addition on his house that was getting in bad shape, so he tore down the addition and basically he's pretty much put the addition back on. So I personally don't see any problem with it. Same size and everything? No, it's a well, little bit smaller. I guess I don't know that. It's a little bit smaller than that. A little bit smaller? Mm-hmm. Be a lot nicer. A lot nicer. Well, he said it was in pretty bad shape. Yeah. I will make a motion to Okay. Except he needs to make sure he knows it's one year. I mean, it's, it's very plainly there, but... I think, sure it, I think it won't be hardly any time at all. Yeah. He's about, yeah. He's very plainly there, but... Well, I, he's not going to want to be working on that for winter. Bill, at least get it closed in. Senior yeah. Albert East. All those in favor, raise your hand. All those opposed, same sign. All those abstaining, same sign. Madam Clerk, five eyes, no nays. No abstentions. Uh, department reports, Mr. Ty Parrish. And I guess Ty tonight was driving, or is driving, the hey, bucket brought, truck, which I guess I had oh, so we can go see it. I hadn't had a chance, and everybody wants to step outside and see what our bucket truck, I, no offense against Ammer and UE, but I figured it was going to be kind of old and rust bucket with the fender flapping. And, Pretty and nice, exactly. yeah, let's yeah. I think we should go out and take a look at it if, with the council's uh, pleasure here. Right. Well, good. Yeah, if you want to go up in the bucket, in the bucket. <laughs> you can go up in the bucket. Liability issues. <laughs> Are you going to put somebody in it and put Renee? No, Side's the same. We've got a small generator on the other side to run the camera. Um, parts, tools, shovels. Ladder rack for getting in and out of manhole. Yeah, yeah, Thank you, Amber and UE. Yeah, right. I mean, it takes 
years to get them, you might as well. Right, yeah, yeah, we've been asking for many years now. <laughs> well, that's good. We did something nice in the paper. Yeah, and we gave him some. Did you see it in the paper? We took, oh, I saw where you took a picture. Of the yeah, we took a picture and did did yeah, it up. Yes. Yeah. I like it. Well, yeah, in your spare time, if you could knock out a little letter of thanks, and then maybe all the council people could stop by and sign it so we could. It'll look a lot nicer if it's got everybody's name on it rather than just mine. Right. Yeah. Cool. Very nice. Okay, recess is over. The curve for the drain is higher than the road. Yes, it is. I might want to borrow that. Hey, Brenda's Christmas lights? <laughs> Don't let her know that. Right. Grief, I got enough of that crap <coughs> on already. She started hanging lights at she? Oh, well. It's year around with her. But if she knew I could get a bucket truck, yeah, she'd have them on every tree in the yard. <laughs> <laughs> what are you she, talking about, Brendan? Christmas lights? Or yeah. What? How did I know? When I didn't yeah, that that the usually year. sane woman is insane during Christmas. <laughs> she loves Christmas. <laughs> well, if we could direct our attention back to the main stage here. Um, I, I, don't even I thought start that it. you guys did a good job. I thought the town was very nice for a corn festival. I think you guys deserve a big pat on the back for all you did in the middle of the construction project. And yeah, it's hard to get time sometimes. But um, Yeah, I thought I didn't hear any complaints. I think everything's okay. Um, we got our cinders hauled in for the winter in the middle of last week too. We Excellent. got five loads of those in, so that's done. Um, we did get sickle mowing done. Steve sickle mowed there the first part of the month. Um, getting ready to make an order, ship a big order of tubes probably. Um, I've got some big tubes to get put in. Once again, if we can find time to get a lot of that's going to be Friday is probably when the contractors aren't in town because you never know when they're called. Wheels kind of fell off the bus this afternoon with everything. We had two water leaks in 30 minutes, and then the water tower was running over. So mm. it's been a, quite the afternoon. Wasn't boring, was it? No. But uh, uh, I can't say I don't know. Well, one thing about the tubes and driveways and such, you know, in the past, it's always been the city's policy not to allow people to have concrete over their tubes. And, you know, with the, all the rains we had this year, the people's driveways washing out, you know, I think that's a policy that we ought to change. You know, we can get a hydraulic brake <clears throat> to put on the front of that skid loader to where, you know, if we had to remove a tube to access the sewer underneath or to access the water underneath, we can get a hydraulic brake to go on the front of that that would you know, we could access that stuff just pretty darn quick, a lot quicker with that, you know. Jackhammer. Yeah, and, you know, of course, so, the jackhammer, that's a chiropractor. Well, but, but a, but a, a hydraulic with. jackhammer, basically, is what you're talking about for the front of the skin loader. I mean. Right. And it'd be a lot better safety-wise and, you know, some of this stuff that people could put concrete over their tubes and... <laughs> on their driveways there and save a lot of it, you know, their rock washing out into the street every yeah. time it rains. That's the price of blacktop anymore. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I'll 
Oh, but, any, but anyway, that's that's my feeling on the thing. I guess I have priced a hydraulic breaker, but compared to the price of uh, one guy's back using the manual breaker, it seemed pretty cheap all of a sudden. Unless it's off a plate, you can bust it up in the back up pretty easy. You usually just saw cut it and pull it right off. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like I said, we don't have any right now. We did one um, last year, and it was a chore. It was a pretty good chore to get out of there. But like I said, between the jackhammer and backhoe and saw we got, but it was thick. I mean, they didn't have a rebar, and they just piled it on there. And, but most of, like I said, there's there's really not any in, in town right now. I mean, you know. No, because it's always, right. it's always told right. people you can't do that. And there's right. been a few that went ahead and did it anyway. What's the footage on that from the street up the drive? Is, that, is there a distance? No, it's just not supposed to be over your tube, just for that reason. It, I think it, the, the policy was is the city right away, which each city street has a, not every one of them has a different, but there's... Um, it's not uniform, it's right. not just one number for every street. Right, right? I mean like on the square it's 80 foot and the streets right off the square are like 60 foot and then I think and then some of them will get down to 40 foot from the center Sorry. of the road, you know. I was just thinking if we did allow it that we'd have to come up with a figure on how much, I mean if they, if they poured a complete driveway of concrete they might want to have a seam there where the footage is so that if we did have to tear it out it would look uniform it, yeah you wouldn't have to saw cut it or tear up more concrete than they wanted or whatever right mm -hmm. and, it, and it should it should also be inspected by ty and his crew that way somebody doesn't just pour a concrete driveway out there that they hit with a snow plow every winter too you know they need to make sure that it's done correctly too that'd be my only concern with it because you know if we go to making room for one snow to push and shoulders back to get ready for another one, you know, sometimes we get off to the ditches as far as we can go. And if you got a concrete lab, I don't want to, I don't want to tear up a plow. Would be responsible for going back and fixing somebody's concrete drive. But so. well, it's not something that has to be done tonight. But uh, that's that's my feelings on it. Is that yeah. I know Delmer's always been concerned about. Uh, Piccadilly's driveway up there, and that we should be putting this, and that's actually on their property. They, I don't see why they can't just put some more concrete and come down and have the problem solved. And right. So why don't you think about that and we'll... See if you can come up with a policy at some point. We will adopt it. Okay. There you go. Ty, did Harley Hamlin talk to you? He did, didn't he? Mm -hmm. We need to discuss that a little bit. That's up to you. I don't think it's a big... Con I mean, I guess I was kind of planning on doing it. I don't think it's a big issue, really. Just getting up there and do it. I mean, I, I, I just, uh, Harley Hamlin purchased about... Um, and you'd probably have to go look at it to know exactly what I'm talking about. If you pull into Harley's driveway, though, it was right on the corner of Oak. And that over the years, it has mounted up rather significantly. I mean, it, there's probably a, I don't know, six, eight inch gap just from the asphalt up, falls off in the driveway. It, it, it's kind of a blind spot for him. Like, if he wants to turn around and go north, um, you can't see over the hill coming. And he approached me about while the street was already tore up, about cutting that hill down. And I guess I don't really have a problem with it. I mean, he he offered to, to uh, he first approached me about what the price of asphalt was because he was just going to pay to have it put back in, but the problem you run into now is it's getting so late in the year finding any asphalt and be it's gonna be hard to find any if it is it's not gonna be just tail end stuff. But the street's not real good anyway. And like I said they dug a manhole right up about to his driveway. Um, so even to get us by I could chew it down and, and put some B6X or something on it to, to get us by until next year and we could come back if we wanted to and put asphalt or something on it. But it's not gonna hold the way it is anyway. I mean, the road's pretty tore up, but I don't have a problem doing it. I don't really see that it being a big problem. I mean, I, I see his concern, but like I said, with the street, the shape it's in now before it gets too... He was talking to me like three foot deep. He's wanting to really knock it down. Yeah. Three foot to 20 foot long. 
Yeah, I don't know. We, we wouldn't be able to take that much. That's what he's talking to me. <coughs> uh, we didn't really talk any depths, but he just said, like, knock that hill down. And I could take, I mean, I could take a foot and a half out of it probably pretty easy. Five? Sounds like three foot's a lot, but yeah, yeah that's it, what he's talking about. What, what we would probably do is go in where the new manhole is set. We'd probably start right at the top of it. I'd come from the north. I'd go right off the top of the manhole, and we'd level it off. So there's about probably the way we And that, I could get him, I could probably get him a foot, foot and a half out of there. And I don't see it hurting I don't think that will satisfy him, though. Why? I don't know. I mean. You need to talk to him because I think he's wanting more than that. Well, I know he is. And he's wanting quite a length. Yeah, well, I mean, just it's just kind of a crown. I mean, 20 feet's not that big of a spot, but. Three foot high and 20 feet long. He said he would even do it if the city didn't want to do it. He didn't well, want to do it. But I don't a, think liability. I think we need to. Yeah, it's a city street. I don't have a problem doing it. I, don't, I can't get it lower than what our, what our you know, manhole's set. And it, it's, there's no moving in. I mean, I can't. I can't expose right. my manhole. But it's far enough away the manhole is. I well, the time down. you set that hill down, though, it, it's going to be right there. Because they, they set the one back towards yeah. this house, yeah. yeah I, I mean, time, I time you come around that corner and set that down to, to level it all up. I guess my take on that is I'll do the best I can do with it. I, I can only go solo. I mean, <coughs> anything's an improvement. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, we didn't really talk any. He just wanted to talk about cutting that hill down and have me look at it and... And I don't have a problem doing it, but it's another one of deals where it's it's not going to be a five minute job, you know. I mean, we're going to have to take the backhoe up there and and probably dig the dirt out to get it loose enough that we can do something with it. Yeah, a lot of blacktop dig up first. Yeah, the blacktop won't be such. It's pretty, it won't. pretty <coughs> edgy. Pretty yeah, we get underneath that blacktop though, it's okay. it'll roll right out of there. We we talked about that, but um, it won't be too bad. We'll have to have the backhoe probably to, to dig, dig the dirt up anyway, because it'd be pretty packed underneath there, but. But yeah, um, I talked to him about it a little bit. Okay, well, he comes to the house, and I'm sure Mike, you know, I wouldn't mind doing anything. We talk to head city council, so. Yeah. Do you want to talk to him or you want me to call him? It doesn't matter either way. I mean, I can see him or if you see him. So I, okay. I, I kind of just plan on doing it, but it's just finding the time to get it done. Because, like I said, it, it literally, it's not going to be a, it's not going to be a five minute job to get it where it needs to be. It'll be kind of an all day deal. So, but I'm, I, I don't see the problem with it, I guess, myself. I mean. Okay. Well, you guys did it with Harley, and, and what else do we need to discuss while we have time here? So, what's it going to cost to put the asphalt back on it if you're taking 20 feet of the asphalt will just go back the same as it is. You put four inches or whatever on it, but it'll be a. He said you can use it for fill or something once they are part of it. He talked about. Well, we probably could. There's no base on the road. That's why it's so soft. He was talking about email. I don't know what he's talking about. But yeah. That that's one of them deals where honestly, Rick, I'd, a lot of the, a lot of these roads are going B6X type stuff because it packs so good. Um, I was gonna spend money on asphalt. I wouldn't be probably worrying about patching that right back there in that little spot myself. That's my opinion of it. I think when the sewer project gets done, we're gonna have bigger issues anyway. <coughs> as far as getting some main roads patched up. Yeah. So that's my take on that, I guess. Well, should we talk about Jeff's deal at this time? I guess that was my fault for not getting with you. It was swamp. Um, I did talk with Ron. We, Ron, and I think Mike and Ron had looked at it. I didn't get up there with them when they was up there. Um, and I don't know kind of what you're thinking you want to do on it. Our, our kind of solution, if you want to try it, if you don't, I guess that's up to you, was we could pull that tube out on the north side and put a ditch there to try and keep it from rolling over into your... Well, I, to me, though, that's taken and trying to, after the problem, and then trying to keep the water off me. I'd rather we went back up and fix the original problem where that would drain up there. Because, I mean, I, I kind of bent Rick's here one day. He stopped by, and well, he probably wish he had enough, but uh, <laughs> I kind of showed him. And, I mean, it's, it's pretty clear that the curve's way too high. I mean, actually, down there where the drain is on the end, the, somebody went in there with a uh, 
concrete saw and cut a trench into the drain because the curb is so much higher than the road that the water won't drain into the drain. And you know, I and, and the and then the tube up there that goes from that drain over to the one that goes across the road is I think only a twelve inch drain. It went from a sixteen to a twelve when they split that. The one that runs from the the one from either one of them to the main one, they they put a lot oh, on the sidewalk. I mean, yeah, when they put that corner um, wheelchair access, so I guess I have to have to do all. Well, I don't claim to be an expert, and I wish I was and had the magic bullet to shoot on this thing, but, you know, just whatever it takes. I don't know how, I don't know, Jeff's wanting to move the curb down, is what Jeff's wanting to do. No, I no, I just want to drain. I, I don't, well, but, I don't but, care. But in order to do that, you're talking about we need to set the curb back down. I didn't say that. <laughs> if we, if we got What's that, your solution, Jeff? If we got that to drain, where's the water going to go? It'll go right on down and out the back. Like it used to. Down where? Down that, right down about up the back. I mean, right Across, east, straight east. Straight east. It's right straight east toward to the you. back north of you. There's a 16 inch tube that goes under the road, goes all the way down, or a 16 inch tube under the uh, alley, and it keeps going east. Right now, the water goes down the street and across the street and across my yard instead of going under the road and then goes in that back parking lot. Where it pools and then enters the building. Yeah. So the tube going across is big enough, I think. Just getting it there. Oh, I don't know. I mean, is that the one that's a 12 inch he's talking about? No. No, it's a 16 runs all the way under the road. The 12s are on the corners. On the corners. They're, when they redid the corners for the handicap access, uh -huh. right on the northeast corner, I think there's two 12s that are about, what, six foot long? Yeah. And then they tie right into a 16 inch tube. So you got a six foot and a six foot, and they hook into a big long 16 that goes corner of the road, north of Jeff's, and right on out. <coughs> and, and 212 sounds like that should be plenty for a 12 or for a 16 but the problem is that 112 doesn't carry anything the other 12 that goes toward the south carries the entire downtown We dig that 12 inch tube up that's there and put a 16, tie a 16 into the 16. Will that fix it? You guys are the water people, huh? That's just going to put all that water right back on you again. Just going to go under the road this time instead of over it. But that, that's what, that, it that's worked what fine wanted. when it did that because it went down and went, it's a 16 inch line all the way down across me and out the back. Right now, it's carrying a 16 inch plus it's running across the road from the other side and, and flooding everything. And before, when it was the old line, and, and Mike made this argument back when they were doing it originally, there was so much capacity on the south or on the west side of the road to slowly drain. And now there's there's zero, isn't there? Just about capacity over there to hold water. Yeah, it's it's not as deep as it was. No, it doesn't set on the corner anymore. If that's what you mean, mm -hmm. it doesn't. You know, if it gets a rain, the water comes down there, and as soon as it comes down there, it starts across the road. It does. Would it be feasible to replace the twelve with the sixteen? Yeah, I mean, I suppose, but 
I don't know if that's going to get done what Jeff's wanting to get done. Because the water Jeff's talking about coming across, he says comes across from, from me saying that's coming across from like the steps. In the no, parking lot. No, it's, it, it, and I, like, I, I showed Rick this, the, the corner down where the tube is, is actually higher slightly than maybe 50 feet back. And uh, so when it gets down to the corner and it can't drain fast enough, then it starts backing up. And then when it comes across, it's going to come across the low spot in the road, which is about 50 feet back from it. It is. So why can't we bury the tube deeper? It's not, see, it's not getting through the tube to these talking about. That, that, that's why I was wanting whoever comes down there so we can walk out there and look. It's a lot easier to sit there and show you what, what the issue is. You need to do it when it's raining. Well, I mean, it's, e it's pretty easy to show when it's done. I mean, I showed Rick, and I think Rick understood it when we were there. I the only thing I I guess I don't know, Jeff, is, uh, I mean, if it does cross the road, it's still going to go down your the curb on your street, side of the street, doesn't it? No, it, it goes on past my curb and right on down to the, all, almost to the alley, not quite to the alley. That tube goes all the way. This one, you mean? Or? See, I think this we need a tube the, uh, here down to site that concrete sidewalk. That works the the place we're talking about is over here. And this comes across, goes through here, and goes all the way down to the skid loader, mm -hmm. right in front of it, right there. Right now, all the water is coming across and running down along here and washing in right there mm -hmm. because it won't, it can't get in the drain across the street. So you can't get a tube here and then down and put another tube in there? I don't, I don't care. You guys want to put another tube in? <laughs> I, I'm just saying that it... So it's, it's not still, running in your basement from the front of the... No, it, it's, it's it's all... Everything yeah. from both sides of the street is coming down the street and running into my back. The other end. But you can see where this is all washed out here and everything, all the way down through there, where you know it's coming it's across the street in this drain. Well, it, this drain is already handling this side of the street. It can't handle both sides of the street mm -hmm. at the same time. Which is kind of like so my just my ten cents on it. I mean, was if we put a ditch there where it couldn't get to you. I mean, I because because I mean you're going to have water there anyway. Whether it's water across the street, or there's going to be water run down there. Whether it's and, and I don't have a problem with it run down there because, like, again, it'll just go down and go through the tube and go on down. Well, the but I mean, there. you're, you're going to have water right there on the street regardless. Not very much. When you get a heavy rain, I, it'll run pretty good. Only, so like, from the intersection the over maybe 20 feet of water. Right mm -hmm. now, I'm getting the entire side. square. I am. See, here the water sits. It sits right. on here. It can't get here, so it runs across the street down to here. Like I said, this right here used to be about 18 inches like lower, and it, and clear up here it's like 16 inches at that bottom step. It is. So, and you can see where they filled in, you know, a bunch just trying to get it up level. And, and right now, majority of the water runs down the street, doesn't it, Mike? I I don't. I've never been up there during the. I mean, I have been there during the rain, but I mean, you can see where it runs down the street just off of the, it looks like it's off of the curb something I mean you can tell that it runs in the curb too but well right here somebody took a saw and sawed the concrete out right there so that it would actually run into the drain because this, the curb is higher than the street by a couple inches and I, and I showed Rick that that there's a place where they sawed it to drain it So what do you want to try and do with it, Jeff? I mean, I, I want to drain the water so it doesn't come I know, but, but I mean, what, 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 you know, what, I'll try and work there however we can. Of course, whatever they want to fund us to do, I mean, but I, I don't know what, I mean, you want to lower the curb? You want me to raise the road? I mean, I, I, I don't care. I mean, we can take and put sandbags down the center of that street, but it'll look kind of funky. Right. 
be hard to turn that corner. Be well, cheap Jeff, but it's not going to fix it. two or three suggestions have been thrown out, and you don't seem to like them, but you won't tell us what you want. Well, I, I don't care. You, this is my thing. You, if, you if don't this, want this, water this, coming across the road. I understand. Yeah, this, but, this is my thing. If if I say, well, yeah, do the 16-inch tube, and it still won't carry the water, you guys are going to say, hey, we did what you said. And, I, and I'm not into that. I just want it fixed. Well... Until you ask it for something, we're probably not going to do anything. So. I am asking that the water drain and not come across the street on okay. my property. But how do you propose that we do that? In Davy's words, I'm not a ditch guy or a water guy or anything, and I would have to say that the council would be that person. Okay, well, how come every time Ty has a suggestion, you don't seem to care for it? Because the only suggestion they had was put a ditch or a ditch down the side right. of my property so that it would drain faster past me rather right. than taking care of the water that is draining up on the street. It's what's on the street into his yard coming down the hill in the grass. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The city is diverting the water over onto me and then wanting to put a, a ditch or a bank so that it doesn't cause me a problem. So how do you propose the city stop doing that, in your word? Well, at one point, we talked about going to the other end of the block, heavy corner of the Blockies, and putting another box and a tube under the street up there. It needs it anyway, whether whether it uh, helps Jeff's problem or not, but will that, will that help him? Well, it, could, it certainly it couldn't hurt him. Yeah. It, it needs it anyway. It certainly couldn't hurt him. There's going to be... There, you know, there's, if it rains six inches in four hours, there's nothing we can do that's going to no. prevent. And, and, and that so would, and that would be the, and that would be the exaggerated link. I'm saying a half, gonna, an, a half inch of rain in a couple hours, it's going to come across my road. Right. And, and that's not a huge rain. No, I mean, no, if, it's if not. we get four feet in three hours, nobody in town's safe. But that's right. not what I'm talking about. You under, yeah. And, we all understand. So a half inch yeah. of rain in two hours and the drain on your corner that it's missing, what, is that full? It's taking care of my side of the street. My side of the street would drain into the drain on my side of the street, but when you then take all the water from the entire square, bring it across the road, no, there's no way that one can do everything. Then it's no, full it's, and it's running over. It's yeah. running over from both sides, yeah. The lumber yard. We talked that before, David, like you said, didn't we? Is that feasible? What do you guys think? Is that feasible to go up there and I, I try that? I think when you know? we did the sidewalk project, Alan and I both stressed very hard that we ought to put that a drop inlet in that square, in that corner up there by the courthouse, would be the southeast corner to divert the water down by the sail barn. I remember that we were very adamant about wanting to do that, but um, several people have thought that it's always drained all the way around there. It'll always, it, it'll do it. So just do it the way it was, and that's what we did. Um, I think some of the problem that, that Jeff keeps stating is the crown of the road has been taken off on the west side. It, it still crowns good to his east side. And we can't really raise the center of the road up because it creates too much of a dip coming out of his drive. I totally agree with that. I don't know if lowering the curb and upsize, you know, I mean, it, if you lower the curb six inches and make that a 16 inch inlet, maybe for 30 feet, 20 feet from that 16 inch tube, back south, go back and lower the curb six inches so it's got a little steeper drain and then upsize that tube and put a box on the other end i don't think you'll have any more problems now you know i've been wrong before <laughs> so that's my two cents is do there, you think we six no <laughs> well, well i don't know either is, is there some type of a machine that will grind that down so that water will run into that where it's supposed to without doing a bunch of digging I, I think you're, I think to be honest with you, I think you're going to have to go back to wherever, maybe yeah, back to the stairs curve, or whatever, have to, cut the curb out, drop it down, and, and pour a new curb. 
it, you know, I mean, because in other words, you're gonna the curve is only so thick and bottom still. Right. We made a change that. We're gonna get some trouble there. Sounds to me like if it was two inches lower and wide enough, it would carry that water down to where it's supposed to go. Well, like I said, you know, the concrete really doesn't have to take it out. Just lace it. Grind it. it. Yeah. You could probably get a milling machine, but what's that going to do to your curb? It, the, the problem is that it can't be more than what? Five or six inches thick to start with. You know, I don't think it was great. Was the, the, the curb part that they drive on was a foot thick. Or, or, or maybe it was the top of it's a foot thick and then the curve's four inches tall or five inches tall and the other is yeah, six inches and then it's got the curve on top. Is that, I, I know guys probably know. But, yeah. but the problem is if you drop drop the curve, that's inside. Well, it's okay if it's, it, as long as it tilts the other way. If it's wide enough, it'll carry a lot of water, but it's not, it doesn't sound like the water is falling the, the curve. Well, I think we should look into the box up by Caddy Corner from Lucky's and, and another outlet and try to get rid of a lot of the water before it even gets down to that side. Unfortunately, a lot of that water doesn't go to that corner. It still comes across and comes on the street. It, it might fix it. I have no idea. I just all the water from the 4-H pavilion, all that up there, comes across. And I mean, the city crew just scooped all the rock up and put it back in because uh, the community center parking lot drains off the east side. And, and I'm not doubting that so. the water didn't wash the gravel out, but I couldn't. I went by there one day and I couldn't tell if it was the kids' bicycles dragging the no, there, gravel all out there, or there if was, it was water running through there because there, there was a bicycle there was a, there was a bicycle there, tracks. There, there was a too. there was a ditch right around the end of the stone because the stone doesn't go all the way up. There was actually a ditch where it washed all the rock down. It looks like it drains south to me. I don't know. Maybe I'm looking at it crooked. The parking lot. Yeah, I talk to my track and see if he can't come in or something and drive that down to where it would flow down the oh, down yeah. the curve where it's supposed to. I'd be curious. Oh to hear yeah, my, my my two cents on that. If you come in, <clears throat> if you come in and tried that and it didn't work, then you go and dig it out. Yeah. We can put the tube in at the south end like we're talking about and see if we can't get something. To make that where that water will stay in that curve until it gets to the tube, and then go back down I mean, to the good. alley and run in your yard again. The good. Uh, <laughs> the, the the promise at the time was because we we went over this issue. Mike stopped construction of it and everything when this happened, and we sat there and talked about it. And the the idea was that you guys were going to blacktop it like that year. And that he said that what he'd do is set the machine on the edge of the curve and come down through there and the water would run over into the curve. And I don't know, it was a it was a lot of blacktop you guys put in there that year and it still didn't get up to the curve. That's how much fill had to be put in because the curve was raised so high over there. And uh, then it never was blacktop or anything. It wasn't. So what did you say, Ty? I was to say, a, a, a single patch of layer would help uh, along that side. You know, if we take the machine, one, probably one pass would... It'd have to the center of the street. Yeah, yeah. you'd, you'd feather it out a little ways, but... Because then you'd have water running down the edge of the... Well, you, but you, you know, you feather it out on that one end, and feather it out as you come out, but... I mean, that, that would definitely help. I don't deny that a bit. I mean, yeah, because it... But, but before that, you said something about putting something in, and if it didn't work, dig it out. Or well, like Ron was saying, if you get somebody, to, if you want to come in and try and shave part of that curve down and try it, you're not out. But if it don't work, you, you know, 
you're looking at possible day and out dropping a little bit on that end anyway. I mean, you can come in and, and what he's talking about, just grinding some off of the curb without disturbing any of us. Your sidewalk's still there, I know that. Well, just just so you know, so those milling machines are not going to leave a smooth finish no. when they're done. You know what I mean? It's going to be rigid all the way down that curb that he builds on. I mean, it's not going to put a nice finish on it to where. And at the end, you still need to dig it out and put the bigger tube in. Right then and then. So really we should start there by digging it out and putting the bigger tube in. I agree, yeah. It puts a bigger tube in, but that you're talking about this much area. Right. Uh, the length of the street is, that's an ungodly amount of money that we actually don't have at this point. So we're going we're gonna to have to come up with a solution that's in our price range, I guess. Well, and that's where the problem started is we didn't have the money for the project that was done. We didn't write any of the checks for the project. We didn't have, we had some control, but not total control over what was done up there because we didn't have the money in the project. But at the same time, I would think that if I decided to put the curb in on my side and decided to do whatever I wanted to do, I would think the city could stop and say, now, you're, we, this is what you have to do. This is, these are the rules we need, and this is what it has to be. Not just that anybody can do anything they want to. Did we know that that was too high when they did it? Yes. Mike stopped the project. We he, actually, came, he, came, he came into town from being gone. We, we had actually taken, we took some sections of concrete out because they were going to come out. He, he came Above in with, the pavement. He came into town and they could immediately see that it was running uphill and going to be over we the tried, road. We tried to south. What happened is when they got to the corner, somehow or another, the contractor got on the wrong grid. I don't know what happened. And they were going uphill all the way there. And by the time they got to the end, they were going to be out of the uh, street, basically, if they kept following the same grid. So to save because we only had, they only had a set amount of money to try and save what was going on. We went back and took out two or three sections and tried to get it dropped down from there to save the project. In other words, they were gonna to have to take out the entire east side of that square's curb, which would have put them twenty to $30,000 over budget. So we tried to salvage what we had by stopping them, taking out a couple pieces of curbing and starting over on a new grade and without having an extreme hump on lowering it. And that's where the water's coming across. And, that, and that, that's where we're at now. We tried to salvage what was done wrong and this now, is where we're at. Now it's going to cost us. Remember that. Remember that thing. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. so I don't remember that. I guess we should have the contractor just rip it all out. Fix it at the time. Hmm. We'll do some digging. Maybe we can get somebody to grind that down, especially where you're talking where there's a hump in it. I, well, the hump is, yeah, just have to come over and let me show you what we're talking about. I don't think anybody gets pictures sitting around here. They just think it did. I already was there and looked at it. I mean, but I mean, I, to me, if I was doing it, I guess, and I was throwing your guys' money at it, my first thing would be to go down to the corner and put a 16-inch tube in and get it back to where it's, it'll carry it. Uh, I guess if I was throwing more money at it, I'd go up to that other corner and put a tube or cross going east. I would think the people down east would throw a fit because there's no tubes going further east because it's just going to run down in their yard. But that's not me, so I don't care. Uh, and uh, then I, I would think over on that curb by the community center, they have a wing wall that goes up through there and stops. And all the water comes around the end of that wing wall and washes the rock out into the sidewalk and the curb and the street. And if you took that wing wall on up to the corner, at least the water coming across that parking lot to the east 
would come into your tube that you're wanting to put across up in that corner. That would at least take that much more water out of there. It would. Well, yeah, that, I hadn't thought about people downstream of the east. Yeah. But they can come to some other meeting and talk to you guys. Well, sure. <laughs> sure. Well, they call that the law of unintended consequences. That every time you fix something, it causes another problem. That's why all the way back when this curb issue came up, uh, you know. Well, I'll be happy to come look at it when I get off work tomorrow. I'll be happy to come look at it. I shall too. Just name a time. Be about six but it sounds like a 16 inch tube where the 16 inch tube is in the corner and uh and well, what we were talking the, about the drain maybe that is the best place to because start. The we still eat it regardless of whether there's people was. like the water in their ditch we still need a drain there yeah. always have needed a drain there well he's got a good point maybe we ought to see where that water would go how many problems would cause it downstream it goes one block east and then makes a <coughs> turn and runs back south back. or north. north. I mean. so it runs back. The, the only problem is when north. it gets to the alley behind the lumber yard, that there see. isn't no no thing yeah, there. There's a little grade up. about this big that's got dirt over the top of it, and that yellow house there to the left is probably going to get the majority of the water, or it's going to kick it out in the road. And you guys don't want it going down the center of that right blacktop. No, we they don't, don't run want right it down, down the middle of your blacktop. Well, if we put it in, we'd have to ditch it on the south side of the old lumber yard. Put we'd have to ditch it, put a new tube in the alley. And then you just have to chase it downstream. I guess you could cut a caddy corner where that other one goes. There's another tube that goes from the courthouse across there. Yeah. But I don't know how much water it is. I don't know. You can't go south from the... There's a corner of the court, the uh, community center parking lot. I don't, I don't know if elevation, you know, I don't know elevation wise if you made it on. And then you're going to run into part of the same problem of what the carrying capacity would be because it's all on the road and it will hold, it hold so much water. Well, will you be around about 6 tomorrow night? I can be. Do we need to get someone from the community center involved in this so they know what's going on? Oh, um, uh, I, sure, that sounds like well, a great I, I don't know, but if you're going to start messing around with their stuff, but... No, we're really not yet. Not yet. Well, I'll see you tomorrow night about six o'clock. Everybody keep their thinking caps on. <coughs> Anything else for Ty? If there's nothing else for Ty, let's talk to Mike. Right. Oh, sorry. Um, can we get some rock hold? The end of not Clay Street. What's the one here in this street? Monticello. Monticello, up, way up the uh, east end. Sometimes down at Rebuse on that corner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it washed out this summer, but yeah. Yep. Better on there. That's all I got. Should we put on the record about viewing the truck and writing? Uh, oh, I, I jotted that down because you kind of missed it out there, so okay. I put and, and put that on there together with the thank you letters. I'll give you all the calls. Yeah. The mayor said the board ought to have signed. Yeah, we'll include it in the minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Elward. So how goes it down there? We're doing better. Um, as you can see, we're back down. We're yes. only we're down 100%. <laughs> um, so everything's still clicking along. Um, waiting on 
upgrades. Waiting on Bross to call me and tell me that our equipment's in. Um, I did get the ball fields mowed, and uh, the big field's looking about 75%. It's not quite 100%, but it's a lot better than it was. Um, the little field, I bladed it around, and we'll kind of see we'll probably need some sand and stuff to haul in there in the spring and kind of fill in in some low spots and stuff that might hold water. Um, but other than that, I don't have anything. We're going to be hauling quite a bit of sludge this month to try and get things empty. Yep. In that respect. Yeah. So unless you've got anything for me, that's it. Not at this point. All right. Thank you. I have one of those. Robert, do you have anything? Chief said everything's been pretty normal and pretty cold. He had no comments on that street over there then? I, he didn't say anything about it. I asked him if he had anything for you, and he said he didn't. He was supposed to be watching it. Yeah, I'm sure he probably has, but he didn't pass anything on to me to pass on to you guys. Now, my experience in the past is that, you know, people just kind of have a sixth sense that the when that car's around, they seem to know it, and they all behave. Well, they're, they're marked, they're marked for a reason. just assume that it's a car disappears. They're probably going others. a different route, which is uh, Well, I know right they're here. still speeding in the run, the stop sign, and they've been going around the ditch around the speed bump. Been going around the ditch around the speed bump. I'll pass that on. and. Uh, it's there. very epic. You can see the ditch. The property owner put up a, oh, I thought a little crate. Oh, yeah. Yes. With a okay. crate and a red flag. Because huh. they they've been going around. around. Yeah. 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 Do we have any idea who it is? I mean, that would be, it would be nice if they would call in who it was and give us a little guidance on it. that told me did not know. Yeah. I mean, if. But now the other girl might know. If they had any idea who it was, it wouldn't be a big problem to go have a little chat with them. Echo, is your night camera good enough to get license plate numbers? I haven't night, tried that. Night vision won't work on the front and back. He didn't have like super do hickeys compared to what yeah, I'm working it with. It's been my experience. It's, it's pretty rough to get anything if, with that night vision stuff whenever it, well, I guess it, it glares. A lot of it's happening out. during the day. Yeah, yeah, and, it wouldn't have to be a night. No, it wouldn't. I've heard everything. Can you like sit in the bushes? Everything about the speed bumps and the uh, gravel roads that we're making. And There's got to be somewhere. And the lawsuits are going to come from people tearing up their cars. And <laughs> it's always <laughs> darkest before the dawn. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully dawn will come one of these days. <laughs> Uh, moving on, let's see, under unfinished business, I guess if we're going to talk about the country club some, I guess I ought to apologize to the board because, uh, you know, I guess I've never talked to the board. We've had so much turnover in the board in the last couple of years that I, I guess I've, you know, a lot of the board members had no idea when you, Echo was asking questions last month. I'm sure if there's some people that had no idea what we were talking about because we've never actually briefed the board. I had never thought that, uh, I guess it just hadn't entered my mind. So, uh, John and I are both members of the Community Development Corporation along with the commissioners and uh, the three high commissioners. Uh, a uh, former alderman, uh, Mr. Miller, he was a member, or is still a member, so, you know, he knew what the scoop was. Uh, Doug Mayer from the other bank is a member, and then Bob Huffman, who had Huffs in Knox City, but I think he's kind of retired, but he's still on the board. Randy Redding's on the board. Pat uh, Parsons. Pat Parsons. Uh, they were founding members. They've been on the board Pat for all for years and years and years. But I don't know whether you want me to start. Do you want to start, John? I guess the my thought on it is that uh, when the country club folded, there were, you know, the country club had debts, mostly to local businesses. 
and you know the only assets they had were that building, even though they didn't own the ground under it. So, but anyway, the community development kind of as a favor to the city uh, took over the country club's assets, paid off all the local businesses, paid all the country club's debts, so none of the local businesses got stiffed out of the deal. And then the community development, as a favor to the city, has overseen the upkeep of the building, uh, pay the utilities on the building, and, and just generally taking care of it so the city council doesn't have to. So our already two hour long meetings, we don't have to have a third hour while we sit here and talk about what all is going out to the country club building. Do we need to work on the gutters out there? Do we need to replace the glass? To me, it's just been a, a favor that community development has done for the benefit of the city. Now, if the city on tomorrow finds out that we can get a GM plant to go out where that property is, you know, community development be more than glad to sign off and just throw that the whole deal into the great GM project. You know, we've been basically maintaining that building for the benefit of the city. How far, how far off am I from... Well, you're there, but, I mean, basically the Community Development Corporation just felt that uh, the, the buildings have value, the cart sheds, two of them are junk, but there's, there's three of them that are metal that have, uh, they're pretty good buildings, and, you know, they could be taken down and moved, or the city could use them there for storage, uh, but... At the time that the country club was wanting to pay their bills and and uh, get out from underneath all of that out there, all of the buildings were listed with the county assessor as personal property because they can't be real property because the city owns the land. Okay, and some were the Baron Country Club. Where yes, the people own the cabin, yes. but they don't own. The but they don't, don't own the land. And so, with the city being unsure of what they're wanting to do with the lake property, and you know, there, there were several things over the last several years that have come, uh, come about that the board has, you know, not really been interested in. Well, a lot of people have come up with projects <coughs> yeah. for how us to give away the ground. Yeah, they want to give but the city to give the land away. Uh, not the well, first if you want to buy it. For homes, we had told people to do that. Yeah, but there again, if if the city was going to to you know have, make it available for homes, then the homeowners, uh, as they buy the ground, would have to put in some kind of, of sewer system. And uh, so we had looked at maybe trying to incorporate that into the city sewer project. Uh, doesn't look like we'll have enough money left at the end of that for that, but. Until the city decided what they were going to do with the land, and if there was a development that would maybe come that would want to expand out there or build out there, then we felt that uh, uh, that the clubhouse uh, had value to the community as maybe a restaurant if there was a, a shopping mall that would go in out the lake or if there was uh, some other use of the lake, then it could maybe be used as a, a concession stand for activities, fair activities, something like that. Uh, the buildings could be used by somebody or the city as uh, storage buildings, uh, but you better have some pretty heavy locks because I've already lost 12 of them out there. They get cut off as fast as I can put them on. Um, <clears throat> But we just felt that there were too many assets out there to just let them fall away. Uh, I will say that if the city is concerned about how we're administrating it, we'll probably have a meeting and you'll have ownership of them by your next meeting. Um, we, we we're trying to help out the city and just kind of keep the assets uh, to where if down the road they can be used, okay. If down the road uh, we need to go in with a bulldozer and knock them all down, then uh, we can do that too. But uh, we just, we thought there were some assets there that we would 
we put a new roof on the clubhouse, we put a new balcony on the clubhouse, we finished putting siding on the clubhouse, so it's all done now. The basement is, has been torn out, and uh, but one of the things that <clears throat> uh, did come about was the Life in Christ Church that is meeting currently over at the uh, lumber yard. They had uh, one of the places they'd met here in town for a while was out at the clubhouse originally, and so they contacted me and wanted to know if if they could uh, maybe uh, use that out there. <coughs> I'm sorry. And uh, uh, one of the things we we have done with all of our properties here in town is that nothing brings in any income for the community development, and so we we don't pay uh, any taxes with the county on that because we don't have any income generated by it. And uh, so we had had people who were wanting to rent it from us and put in a restaurant and things like that, but at the same time there wasn't, um, there wasn't any way we could really do that um, as the Community Development Corporation. And uh, so that was, <coughs> thank you sir. That was uh, kind of going against the things that the way we handle our properties here in town. Um, but uh, the the church would take care of the property. Uh, they they would use it for six months, or they might use it for ten years, if if it's that long before the city does anything out there. And I never said that the city would have any objections to having a church out there. They seem like pretty good tenants, but if you guys think that's a terrible idea, perfect. I think it's great. I, I just didn't know, so now I know. See, that's yeah. it. I, I think a lot of it's happened. We knew nothing about it even before the other council members, before you guys even. It was all done before any of us knew it. And I didn't know until you brought it up. <clears throat> and I didn't know how to answer the question. You know, I didn't know, so now I know. But it was, it was, I was approached by uh, um, Annie Fisher, uh, who was, I guess, the treasurer of the country club for many years. Yeah. And uh, the thing was, the country club had had members. And so if they had debts, then the debt was going to have to be distributed all, among all the members that they had ever had. And they were going to have to find out which ones were still alive and, and not. And if anything was left in the checking account, then they had to distribute it evenly among all of the members that they've ever had. And so what they wanted to do was they wanted to be able to pay their bills and not have one single cent of assets left at the end. <clears throat> so they figured up how much money they owed the merchants around, and the only thing they had were those buildings, and they owned them as personal property because they didn't have the land. And so they offered to sell us the tractors, the lawnmowers, all the equipment, everything that was in the sheds, the sheds and the country club, for exactly what they owed the merchants and so we paid them and, and Annie asked Doug and so Doug uh, asked got with us and so our board decided we would we would go ahead and purchase it and so we put about 25,000 in it we put another uh, close to we put over 10,000 in it and, and keeping uh, keeping it up so we've got about 35,000 in it so far don't know if that's more than it's worth less than it's worth all we know is that's what it cost us to get them out of their their deal and maintain the the, the the clubhouse. The clubhouse, the back, I don't know if anybody saw the back patio, if the wood patio, it was rotten, it was just about to fall off, the roof was getting really bad, and so we had all those repairs done. If the city wants it, we'll give it to you, you know? You can pay the utilities on You can pay the heat. You can pay the upkeep. You can have whatever you want. If you want the outbuildings, we'll give them to you. 
but we just didn't want them bulldozed down. We just didn't want them to fall down. And look, we got enough properties falling down around here without out there having some things that that people have used and and uh, seem to enjoy uh, using those facilities. So we just were trying to save them. And the city at that point in time had nothing in their budget that they could put into the, the project. So we just kind of stepped up so, and the, so the city didn't have to. So we're all in short. We're, we're the guys that put paid for putting the curbing in over there that you're having trouble with. Don't blame me. We just gave them the money so that they could do the curbing. But we did that because they came to the city and the city said you didn't have the money. And so we stepped in and, and did that where the city could that's what we did out of the lake too okay and i, and so. I think uh annie had talked to some of the councilmen that were on at that time and and the city they were just saying there's nothing the city can do to help you and so that's the reason the community development stepped in so i guess another community development news we're exploring avenues to what to do with the old yes Pardon? The old Parsons Parson Noonan Noonan. building. The old Parsons Noonan building. I've had had people scheduled to come and take a look at it with me, and we're tearing it down uh, over the last three years, and they've all stood me up. I think they come and look at it earlier, and they decide they don't want to tackle it. But I do have a uh, prospect on the alley here. I want to break that plate glass out of there. I'm scared of it. Oh, yeah. But I don't want the news to be council member knocks out plate glass. That's not the one. It's one on the corner. Of but, but the west of it scares me. It, it's the brick one. It's the not the wood one. To to but oh, see, the wood one with the who owns that? Child that's not you. That, that's um, who you got that? Shaw. Shaw. Yeah, that's Shaw's. We got the brick one on the other on the east side of the alley. But see when we. We bought the Herner property over here back in 95, mm -hmm. 96. Second week after we bought it, the staircase fell from the, from the top floor all the way down into the basement. Wow. And when we were, we had to, we, we spent $70,000 tearing that building down. And they got at it and they hit it one time with the track hole after they had half the walls down. and. The wall of what is now the clothes closet started doing this, and so they decided they took that north wall down one brick at a time, mm. and we put epoxy on that whole wall to keep it from caving in on the the okay. clothes closet because it was all brick that was soft brick that if the weather touched it within three years it was going to fall down and take the building next to it with it, and. I, I think they're looking at that same problem with the Parson Noonan building. They're afraid it's not attached to John Love's building on the east side. But I think they're afraid that if they start taking that one down, then, then Love's building's going to go with it. And that's a real problem sometimes. Um, <clears throat> but we're, we're trying to, try, and we're, we're, we're contacted. Dave Davidson to come back in and redo this over here. Mm. Uh, so we're going to get that, that all fixed up again. But anyway, that's what we're, we're doing. That's what we're trying to get done. That's what we did at the lake. If you like it, okay. If you got any ideas, tell us. If you want a contract with us, if you want us to have some kind of agreement with you on what we can do and can't do, we'll either do it or we'll give it to you. So. <clears throat> Uh, if you got a problem, tell us and we'll get out of your way and let you all handle it. If, but if, if you don't have a problem with it, then we'll just keep doing what we're doing. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Bodie. Echo, did you have any Thanks more Thanks for questions? the explanation, Yeah. I get, <clears throat> I had a long talk with John after the last meeting, so I was up to speed pretty much. Uh, are you guys going are you guys doing anything different are you going to do a contract just to kind of have your eyes dotted and your t's crossed do does that matter I don't see I just learned so I don't know 
They right. probably want to think about it for a while, but I really don't see the need to spend thousands of dollars in legal fees to get. I don't see them doing anything wrong, and uh, I guess we have control of what they do. So. Yeah, well, it yeah. sounds. You still own the property. You can kick us out anytime. Yeah. The way I understand it, it's kind of an open ended thing, whereas the church would go in, and if you guys ever need the property for anything, then the church would go out. Yeah. I was out there, and the church has done a lot of cleaning yeah. up, a lot. There's more to be done. But yeah, the only question is I have, like, there's really no protection for the church, really. Well, they don't care. Why should anybody else? You know, we don't have any protection on it either. So, <clears throat> so basically the city holds all the cards. Hmm? The city holds all the cards. Yes, because they've they got do the lands. Yeah. And there's no legality as in are they supposed to bid things out or... Do you know what I mean? Do you understand what I'm saying? So like they, didn't know, they didn't know the property. Or the like, for example, or the road to it or anything. Yeah, know. like they do well, a lease for the mowing part. Yeah. Do they need to so do a lease for the rest of the land? I mean, do they need to leave? It sure is. The parking lot's not the best of shape they could use. Parking lot right there? I, I think that problem will still be around next month. I don't think we have to solve that problem. You know, I, know. I want to go home. Me too. Um, what's next on the agenda? Um, new, business. new business. Any other unfinished business? Is there any new business anybody wants to bring up? What's the stack of cards? Oh, I just brought them to show to the girls. They ended oh, so up boys, on boys it. can't look at them. What? You can look at them. for the small. Okay. So that's nothing we have. It's not really tonight. council business, yeah. No. Okay. Well, that's pretty there neat. Are city. There are city photos. Water tower. Is it time for the mold to be removed? Have you been The mold, does it get about time to that clean? Well, you know, when they said it, Tower was leaked, and right. Melissa and I were looking out the window to see if we could see anything. And I said, Oh, I see a lot of green. Yeah. I, I guess the only thing that every couple years they do it's some maintenance thing, and it's part of the maintenance that has to happen with the tower. They power wash it when they do. Yeah. No, we went through ready. this a couple years ago. <laughs> well, I got a question. Oh, okay. Uh, it, it appears to me that our next meeting. Regularly scheduled will fall on Columbus Day. Do we meet on Columbus Day? Well, we yes. have in the past, but it's not really fair to our employees because they get that day off. No, no. Oh no. Well, what we don't they get thinking? Columbus Day off. Was that thinking of Veterans Day or something? We get Veterans Day, and we get President's Day in February. So we will be meeting on. Yeah. So we will meet. Day. That is also Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> and Canadians with uh, native exemption, we will meet this, right? Yeah, right. We should go up and party with the Canucks up there. Uh, then I move that we adjourn. Is there a second? Thank I'll you, Mr. Stansberry. All those in favor of adjourning, raise your hand. All those opposed, same sign. All those abstaining, same sign. Madam Clerk, I count five. No, I count 12. Five. Yeah. No yeah. names yeah. and no abstentions. Six. Six. We survived another meeting. <laughs>